Rattlesnakes. When we think of these venomous reptiles, we picture the most deadly snakes in North America. But how inclined to bite are these creatures actually? Today, we're gonna find out. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm on a mission to discover the secrets of the natural world. Normally, I'm working with insects and spiders, but venomous reptiles are among the most misunderstood creatures on the planet. While here in Texas, we're trying to track down the most iconic reptile of the American Southwest, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, which brings us deep into Texas Hill Country. We're going to the North Pole. Santa's elves have been a little overrun this year because you've all been such good boys and girls. And so we're joining his elf uh, workforce to create all sorts of trains and dollies for you lovely people at home. But before we do that, we're headed to some beautiful scenic habitat in hopes of finding perhaps some iconic venomous snakes. This habitat is incredible and stacked with venomous creatures. We didn't come across any large rattlesnakes, but we did find something that's rather special. He's big. Wow, you're copperhead big. What is your deal, buddy? This rattlesnake has no business being this big. That's the biggest pygmy rattlesnake I have ever seen. I love how orange they get. And look at that incredible patterning. You'd think that this, this kind of patterning would stand way out, but believe it or not, as crazy as this looks, it gives me incredible camouflage out here on the forest floor. That speckling, and those even like those like faded spots on the side with that orange band all the way down his back. It actually obscures his outline and it serves as basically a way of making him look like he's not a snake. That modeling kind of just, you know, helps him to not stick out. And he's sitting in the leaf litter or like under some pine needles or even at the stump of a tree. That is super useful for his hunting strategy or ambush hunters. They'll sit there coiled up and just wait. Little amphibians, lizards, or even at this size, probably a small mammal like a mouse or a shrew. And they'll walk across its path, lashes out, grabs it and injects that incredible hemotoxic venom. Now for someone as big as me, that's probably not a deadly, deadly venom. So this is a rattlesnake that probably would not be considered deadly or lethal. However, he'd have a pretty rough day if he got bitten by this snake. And right now where he's coiled up, this is the absolute worst time to lay a hand on this snake. Now already, He's done very little rattling. He's not like, you know, bolting away. I've seen dusky pygmies be super, super wiry. This one is relatively cooperative, you know, and maybe if he's stretched out, we might be able to like tail him or something, but I would not lay a hand on a snake like this when he's coiled up just like that, because not only do pygmies have a little bit more of a strike range than a viper of an equal size. They're a bit more athletic and they kind of like spring out, and jump forward with deadly accuracy. So they, if, if a pygmy wants to bite you, he's gonna nail you. But right here, when he's coiled around just like that, what's gonna happen is he can actually use those coils as a springboard and launch even further than his body length for a strike. So this is a bad time to lay a hand on this snake. However, as you can see, he's not coming towards me. He's absolutely chill. He's watching me to see what I do next. But uh, it's not an animal that wants an interaction with a human. See, look at, look at, look at my shoe compared to this snake. My shoe, just my, just the front of my shoe could squish him if I wanted to. And I'm sure there's people out there that'd be like, yeah, squish the snakes. Is, no, these are beautiful little predators taking down those rodent, rodent populations out here. And if you find one in your yard, you, know, you, can, you can actually thank him for the service he's doing, reducing the mice that could be getting into your pantries or something. But uh, this is an absolutely relaxed, non-aggressive, non-mean snake. And I absolutely love him. Since this snake is pretty chill, Gage here, Jack's cameraman, is actually going to show me how, as you can see right here, he's free handling it, which is a little bit outside my comfort zone. But I think, you know, we have to push our boundaries. And if I want to get better, I'm going to have to practice. And you said that if I'm going to tail any snake, this is the one, right? This is the one, really. I mean, this is a very mellow, calm animal, as you can see, as long as you're calm as well. Uh, a really big part of handling these snakes is remembering that a few parts of them you, you know you want to keep off limits like the neck and then the very tip of the tail so when you're holding them by the very tip of this tail um uh, this pulls really easily and that you know agitates them so they get a little bitier so usually when you're tailing even with a hook you want to handle right about there 
And if you're going to free handle it, you would support the upper body, you know. And of course you want to keep the head away from you, but, you know. That's insane. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? They're pretty, pretty mellow animals usually. And of course, you know, you can't do this with every, yeah. every pygmy rattlesnake. But that's insane. I mean, that goes to show, like, you know, these animals get vilified so much. And here we are, like, manipulating the snake without, like, too much, uh, to, in his case, no tools. I'm going to try with the hook. But, you know, these are not mean. From about right there. Right there? Mm-hmm. All right. You can hold them further up than you'd think, uh, especially if you keep your hook right about right there. They you know. feel so strange. Like that keel, those keeled scales are like rough to touch. You can see he's like inching forward on the old boy. Wiry. Yeah, I'm gonna set him down. I don't wanna, don't wanna push him too much. Let's see here. <laughs> he's just so much more fluid with the thing. <laughs> Try holding it more with a flat hand. Here, let me okay. see the hook. All right. So with smaller, uh, with smaller venomous snakes like this, when I'm using a hook and tailing, um, I usually hold the hook at about halfway. You know, yeah. there's no point in, you know, keeping it this far from your body. Um, they do have quite the strike range, but when, you know, you have them properly hooked like this, they can't strike much further than what's past that hook. Um, so even when you're tailing, you do have a lot of safe space. And um, I found that, you know, rather than sacrificing dexterity and just hold by the very tip of the tail, but a lot of times that agitates them. So I, I, I found that keeping them calm is, um, it makes it a little easier. So hold further up like this and kind of keep your hand flat and then keep the hook flat just like this. I'm just gonna think it's on, you know, you know, safer ground. Yeah, that, that's that's true with a lot of non-venomous snakes too, is you wanna, if you're gonna hold them and always be careful and make sure you can ID them when you're gonna hold them. But if you're gonna hold a snake, trick is you want to make the snake feel as if it is on a surface and you're not like grabbing it. You know, any snake, you know, venomous, non-venomous, mildly venomous, whatever, they're going to feel more comfortable if they don't feel like a predator is, you know, kind of like scooping them up and dragging them away. Wow, look at that. That was great technique, Spencer. Yeah. That was very, like that, that right? was very yeah. good uh, mm -hmm. getting it up off the ground. Because I was about to say if, if Gage, like to put it on the ground as well so you can pick it up off the ground. Because obviously right. in the wild, nobody uh, hands it to you already tailed. That's perfect. Yeah. Excellent. See, now you're an expert. <laughs> there you go. I wouldn't call myself an expert. Got the JWoww crew training. <laughs> right. Crash course. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely do not try this at home. This is, I mean, I'm with actual experts who have years of experience with hundreds of species, you know, uh, and like, this is a snake that like, if a bite did happen, it would be a, a rough day, probably a rough week, but like, it is survivable. And these guys have bite protocols and such. Like, we know what we're doing. They know what they're doing. And wow, look at you. Despite their toxic venom, these snakes mostly just want to be left alone. Venom is a precious resource evolved to be used on prey and only in absolute last case defense. While I'd never advise anyone to lay a hand on a rattlesnake, this individual was a perfect example of how these animals really do not want to bite us. And then getting this hand-on experience, I am way more equipped to deal with even crazier creatures, hopefully in the near future. If you want to see how I learned to work with venomous snakes, check out this playlist right here, which documents my adventures with Zachary Gray down in Louisiana. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.